If I said to you 10p3, by the way, I would just say sometimes this is colloquially read as 10 pick three versus 10 choose three. I get it, but I don't really like it because what's the difference between choosing and picking? Um, whereas there is a difference between a permutation and a combination. Order matters, you're arranging things, and here order doesn't matter, you're just putting them in a heap, okay? So you may hear people say that, but that's why I don't say it. 10 p3. How would you explain? It's the number of ways to what? Uh, arrange right. 10 objects. Arrange three, three things out of 10 objects. Okay, yeah, so you've got 10 to choose from. 10, I like to call them 10 options, right? So this is the number of ways to arrange three objects when you've got 10 that you could choose from, right? 10 options, right? That's fine. Okay, now 10p10, just following the pattern, is the way to arrange 10, ob 10 objects with 10 options. Okay, now you might recall this was a special one. Can you remind me, based on the definition of what npk is, what is 10p3 in the numbers? Not the final number, how do you work out what it is? Over three Okay, so it ends up being 10 factorial. Yeah, yep, all right. Um, 10 p 10. Now, because as you um, as I just mentioned, this is 10 take away 3. Oh. That's how you get 7, right? So what's this? 10 take away. No, that's not the It's 4. 0 factorial. Okay, so by the way, oh. um, like when people first learn what factorial notation is, um, People say, oh, zero factorial, that doesn't make sense though, because two is two times one, three is three times two times, etc. So what's this? Like, you're not meant to get to that, right? Now, there's a fancy argument for why this is the case. I'll show it to you later if you're curious. But one of the really obvious reasons why it must be the case is actually precisely to make sense of this notation. Right? It has to be this way. This must be one, otherwise everything just breaks down. Okay? Now, but, hold so on a second. one factorial equals zero factorial. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So the factorial function is an interesting thing. Now, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll argue for it later if you like, but there's something else I want to point out before I get to that. So I'm defining 0 factorial as 1, so that's 10 factorial, right? And do you remember, this is actually kind of how we started, right? If you've got a bunch of objects and you want to arrange all of them, then we pictured having n boxes, right? Do you remember this? And you're like, well, 10, 9, 8, all the way down to 1. That's 10 factorial, right? So this is just a special case of NPK, right? Just, it's NPN. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Stay with me. Follow the pattern now. I'm now changing into 10C3. So what's the difference between this guy and this guy? How would I phrase this differently? Yeah, Doris. Um, you're just choosing three objects from 10? Yeah. That's, that's the only difference, yeah? So arrange versus choose means order versus no order, okay? So I want to choose three objects instead of arrange them, and I still have the original 10 options. Okay, now I'm calling this another connection to binomial theorem because the original connection I gave you was if you take something like A plus B, a binomial, and you raise it to a power, like three, okay? The reason why the coefficients end up being these guys is because when you expand this, right? Do you remember what the expansion is? Like at the end, I guess you'd have a cubed plus three, 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 this plus three, this plus. Okay, so what this means is there are three ways to get two A's and a B. There are three ways to get an A and two B's, right? So you're choosing from here, and because you've collapsed them all together, you don't care about their order anymore. That's why it's this guy, okay? So now I want you to help me remember, we um, learnt a bunch of identities to do with this binomial coefficient, right? In particular, because these guys, we first met the actual numbers from Pascal's triangle, we learnt that if you count it up from 0, 1, 2, and 3, okay? <laughs> this is the, like, including the 0 term, it's the fourth one along, right? This is equal from the other end to what? Okay, now I can go ahead and crunch the numbers because of course, if this is what our definition of um, 10p3 is, right? You start with this, but then you realize, oh wait, I've overcounted. Do you remember? Why have I overcounted from here to here? Yeah, that's right. It's like, you know those three that you picked? You can arrange them in 
three factorial ways, and all of those ways look the same to you if you don't care about their order. Does that make sense? Now you can see why this is going to give you this. Do you see? You're just going to do the three factorial first, and then the seven factorial. Same deal. Now I want to ask you why. Because that's what the numbers tell you. But what, what interpretation makes sense of this? Okay, so here are, my, um, here are my 10 objects that I'm choosing from, again. Now, if I were to choose three, someone want to give me three colors? Blue, red, blue, red, pink, pink, and pink. I think Mitsu said red. Okay, there you go. Whoops, it's a bit, there we go. <clears throat> All right, now I've picked, I've picked three, okay? And um, the number of ways to do that is, is considerable. Okay, so I can work out what that is. I've picked three, and I'm suggesting that the number of ways there is to pick three is the same as the way, the number of ways to pick seven. Now, that seems a bit, I should say choose, sorry. Seems a bit weird to me. Shouldn't there be so many more ways of choosing these guys? Because there's so many of them. Shouldn't there? So you're choosing, you're choosing seven not to put in the three. Right, okay, so here's the connection, right? And maybe it sort of like flew past you quite quickly. To choose three objects from 10 options, Right, those three up there, right, is exactly the same. You can in fact see it here. It's a bit bright, sorry. Choosing three is the same as choosing seven to not have in your group. Right, suppose you want to pick your, you know, captain, vice captain, whatever. Okay, you've got your your trifecta, your three up there, which is the same as saying which ones you're going to reject. Okay, so in fact, picking these, choosing rather these three and choosing these seven is exactly the same problem. That's why they have the same answer. Okay? Now, this is kind of like thinking about a complement, but in terms of counting rather than probability. Okay? So these kinds of complements are actually equal to each other. We say there's a one-to-one -one, uh, correspondence between these. Right? The number of ways I can pick three, if you pick all of the different kinds, like that one, and then that one, and then that one, you can see each of these combinations of three corresponds to exactly one combination of seven. Right? And there's, that's why there's exactly the same number of each. Okay? 